Je vous souhaite, au nom de l'Université McGill, la bienvenue à la collation des grades printemps 2022 pour la Faculté des sciences de l'agriculture et de l'environnement. Let me welcome you on behalf of McGill University to 2002 Spring Convocation for the Faculty of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences. This ceremony will start shortly. Dans quelques instants, uh, je vous soulignerai les étapes principales dans le déroulement de la cérémonie. In just a few moments, I'll go over the principal steps of the ceremony. The ceremony will start shortly. Uh, however, first, let me ask you to join me in giving the Brian Sand Quintet a very warm round of applause. La cérémonie commencera avec l'entrée du cortège d'honneur et terminera avec sa sortie. Juste avant son entrée, je vais vous demander de vous lever. The ceremony will begin with the entrance of the platform party and it will end with its departure just before it arrives. I'll ask you all to stand. Une fois le cortège est installé sur la tribune, la docteur Tracy Smith Bissett chantera l'hymne de l'université. Once the members of the platform party are in uh, found their places on stage, Dr. Tracy Smith Bissett will sing the university hymn. Le président du Conseil des Gouverneurs, Monsieur Panda, aussi bien que la principale Susan Fortier, vous adresseront chacun un bref discours suivi par l'allocution du Dr. William Dietz, qui aura tout juste reçu un doctorat honoris causa. The chair of the board, Ram Panda, as well as the principal, Suzanne Fortier, will each say a few words. Following this, there will be the convocation address given by Dr. William Dietz, who will have just received the doctorate honoris causa. Pour la remise des diplômes, nous procéderons rangée par rangée, en commençant avec l'avant et passant vers l'arrière. S'il vous plaît, votre rangée, restez assis jusqu'à ce qu'un placeur vous indique le moment de vous lever et de faire la queue La long, le long de, du mur. So for the, during the, uh, for the conferral of the degrees, um, we'll proceed row by row, starting from the front, moving towards the back. Please remain seated uh, until you're told to rise, your row is told to rise by a, an usher. Avant de, montrer, avant de monter sur l'estrade, s'il vous plaît, séparez votre ticket en deux. Vous allez donner une partie à la personne au loutrin à droite et à l'autre à la personne ici en bas qui va vous remettre votre diplôme. Before getting up on stage, please make sure that your line card is separated into two. You're going to give part to the person on my right at the lectern and the second part to the person down here who will give you your diploma. S'il vous plaît, restez, uh, l'auditoire, s'il vous plaît, restez assis pendant la remise des diplômes. So I'm asking the audience, please remain seated during the conferral of the diplomas. Après la remise des diplômes, Chloé Garzon prononcera le discours d'adieu. Ensuite, la secrétaire générale, Edith Rogalska, prononcera quelques mots de clôture et la docteur Tracy smith Bassett chantera l'hymne national. Once the diplomas have been conferred, Chloé Garzon will say the valediction. This will be followed by a few closing remarks by the Secretary General, Edita Rogowska, and finally, the singing of the national anthem by Dr. Tracy smith Bissett. Une fois le cortège est sorti, nous procéderons encore une fois avec la, la, le départ des, des diplômés. On va sortir rangé par rangé en commençant encore une fois avec l'avant et en passant, passant vers l'arrière. Encore une fois, attendez jusqu'à ce qu'un placeur vous indique le moment de sortir. So after the platform party is left, the diploma recipients will then leave, leaving row by row, working from the front to the back. And we ask again that you remain seated until it's, the time has been indicated for your row to leave by the usher. Quelques rappels amicaux, a few uh, polite reminders. Uh, mettez vos téléphones cellulaires en mode vibration. Please put your cell phones on vibration mode. Best to do that now and not in five minutes. Ne sortez pas par les issues de secours, sauf en cas d'urgence. Please do not use the emergency exits unless there's an, ex unless there's an emergency. Et finalement, la simple politesse exige que vous ne quittiez pas la cérémonie avant qu'elle ne se termine. Basic civility requires that you not leave the ceremony before it's over with. 
Maintenant, j'ai le plaisir de demander d'inviter le doyen des étudiants Robin Beach à vous indiquer les mesures de sécurité mises en place dans l'éventualité très peu probable d'une urgence. It's now my pleasure to ask the Dean of Students, Robin Beach, to inform you the security measures put in place in the very, very unlikely event of an emergency. Robin, please. Uh, merci. I have the pleasure of reading the safety instructions to you, so please pay attention. Uh, welcome to McGill's McDonald campus and to this year's convocation. Congratulations on the success of your graduating friend or family member. My name is Robin Beach and my role is to tell you about the emergency evacuation procedures. Bienvenue au campus uh, McDonald de McGill et à la cérémonie de collation des grades cette année. Je m'appelle Robin Beach et on m'a demandé de vous informer des procédures d'évacuation d'urgence mises en place. If an evacuation is required, the registrar will make an announcement. Depending on the circumstances, you will be evacuated to the Watson Field located on the east side of this building or to the Glenfinnan Arena. Follow the instructions of security officers and the ushers. Ushers and security officers will lead you to the evacuation location. Leave all baby strollers behind, but please take your children with you. <laughs> if you need assistance at any point in time, please speak with an usher or a security officer. Once the emergency is over, announcements will be posted on the McGill website. Si une évacuation des lieux devenait nécessaire, le registraire en ferait l'annonce. Vous devrez alors quitter la pavillon sans tarder. Selon les circonstances, vous devrez vous rendre sur le terrain Watson qui se trouve à l'est du bâtiment. Le placier et les agents de sécurité vous dirigeront sur le terrain à côté. Laissez toutes les poussettes sur place. Si vous avez besoin d'assistance, veuillez vous adresser à un agent de sécurité ou à un placier. Une fois, La situation d'urgence passée, des annonces seront publiées sur le site web de Miguel. Je vous remercie de votre attention. Félicitations aux diplômés. Thank you for your attention. Have a wonderful day and once again, congratulations. Levez-vous, please rise.
please be seated. Thank you, Dr. Smith Bassett, for your wonderful rendition of the university song. I would like to start the ceremony by recognizing that McGill University is on land which has long served as a site of meeting and exchange amongst indigenous peoples, including Haudenosaunee Anishinaabe nations. We acknowledge and thank the diverse indigenous peoples whose presence marks this territory on which peoples of the world now gather. Bienvenue à tous les diplômés, leur famille, proche ami, notre principal et vice-chancelière Suzanne Fortier et membre du conseil de gouverneur et de la faculté. À titre de chancelier délégué et au nom de l'Université McGill, bienvenue à notre magnifique campus McDonald's pour célébrer la cérémonie de remise du diplôme 2022 de la Faculté de l'Agriculture et de l'Environnement. As Chancellor Delegate of McGill University, I welcome you to our beautiful McDonald campus to celebrate the class of 2022, graduating from the Faculty of Agricultural and Environment, Environmental Sciences. Let me begin by offering my sincere congratulations to all of you. This is a great day, an incre incredibly beautiful day for you, our graduates, and best of all, we can celebrate your day in person with your friends and family. No more Zoom convocations, like in the past two years. Permettez-moi de commencer par vous adresser mes sincères félicitations. C'est un, un grand jour pour vous, nos diplômés. C'est un honneur d'être ici, de partager avec vous cette étape importante. As a fellow graduate, I have a keen appreciation of the importance of this day and the memories that you will keep with you of this moment in your life. I know that this milestone is a well-deserved celebration of hard work, commitment, sacrifice, and achievement. So once again, congratulations to each and every one of you. Let me also take a moment to recognize the outstanding contributions of our principal and vice chancellor, Suzanne Fortier, who recently announced that she will conclude her tenure later this year. Tout au long de son mandat à McGill, la professeur Fortier a guidé notre université à l'aube de, de son troisième siècle avec une vision, une passion, une sagesse et une grâce inégalée. In my role as chair of the Board of Governors, I have had the unique privilege and pleasure of working with Suzanne, and I have nothing but admiration and respect for her work, her dedication to McGill, and her unwavering focus on student success. A big hand for our <laughs> principal. In the days ahead, I can safely predict that you will receive lots of advice. This advice will come from many sources, parents, relatives, friends, professors, and others. Je n'ai pas l'intention d'ajouter à cette abondance de conseils, mais j'aimerais vous faire part de mon point de vue sur mon expérience à McGill et de deux valeurs durables que j'ai retenues pendant mes, mes études à McGill et qui m'accompagnent encore aujourd'hui. I don't want to burden you with the facile advice, but I would like to share my perspective on my McGill experience and two enduring values, gratitude and commitment, both of which I gleaned from my time as a student and which I carry with me to this day. I came to McGill as an international student from India back in September 1968, just before the days began to get cold. As most international students will tell you, you will never forget your first Canadian winter, try as you might. And I'm sure your roommate or your friend must have told you, Canada has four seasons, winter, 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 and winter. <laughs> and you will soon find out. I arrived on campus as a stranger in a new country and a new city. I didn't know what to expect, 
But what I found was a community that was very welcoming and that made me feel right at home. That was important as I was in the first year of a master's degree in engineering and dealing not just with a demanding workload, but also a different educational system to what I had experienced in India. I succeeded during that first year and beyond in large part because of the exceptional kindness of classmates and especially my supervisor, Professor Eric Adler. Le Professor Adler a fait tout son possible pour m'aider à mes débuts et m'a ensuite soutenu dans mes efforts pour obtenir une bourse et un poste d'assistant enseignement. I have tried in different ways to show my gratitude by paying it forward to others, whether as a mentor, volunteer, supporter, or a fellow McGill graduate. I know only too well the power of a kind gesture or encouraging word, and I remain to this day grateful for the kindness that was extended to me when it mattered most. The second value which I took, which took root during my time at McGill was commitment. As a student, I quickly realized that our campuses nurture some of the most creative, innovative, and dynamic people I have ever met. Not only that, but they were and are intensely committed to projects and research with a direct positive impact on some of the pervasive challenges facing our world that has never been more evident than today across our schools and faculties where important work is taking place in research, culture, education, public policy, the arts, history, food security, the environment, sustainability, and so much more. That level of passion and commitment had a profound impact on me during my time at this university, and it continues to inspire me. It's one reason why I have focused my efforts on a commitment to sustainability. Especially in this faculty, most of you are related in some way or other on the, to the issues on sustainability, so this will ring a bell to you, to you all. Au fil des ans, j'ai participé à un certain nombre d'initiatives au sein de ma faculté sur la durabilité en ingénierie. Together with fellow members on the Board of Governors, we have worked on McGill's sustainability vision and our commitment to carbon neutrality. Of course, it's a continuous process, and we recognize that there are many challenges ahead, but there's no doubt about our collective commitment to this goal. Today, some 55 years after I first set foot on the McGill campus, I constantly return to those two qualities that have shaped my life. Gratitude, for the acceptance, kindness, and support of this amazing community, and commitment to the ideals and initiatives that make this world a more sustainable planet for future generations. I do encourage you to express your gratitude to those around you who have nurtured your work, your life, and your spirit. Some of those people are here in the audience today. And I do hope that you will embrace a commitment to lend your support and your energy to do whatever you can to contribute to a better, more sustainable, more inclusive, and more equitable world. Félicitations encore une fois, et que ce jour soit à la fois une fin joyeuse et un début prometteur pour vous tous. Good luck, and may this day be both a joyous ending and an auspicious beginning for all of you. Thank you, merci. J'aimerais maintenant inviter la professeure Suzanne Fortier, principale et vice-chancelière de l'Université McGill, à s'adresser à l'auditoire. It's now my pleasure to invite Professor Suzanne Fortier, principal and vice-chancellor of McGill University, to address the audience. Professor Fortier. Bienvenue au finissant de 2022 et félicitations. Welcome. Congratulations, the class of 2022, and a warm welcome to you, to your family members, to your friends. We're all here together today to celebrate your achievements. 
Et quel plaisir d'avoir enfin la chance d'être ensemble en personne. Alors, on va bien en profiter aujourd'hui. It is important to take a moment today to thank and celebrate all the people who've been there for you during your journey at McGill. Your family members, your friends, professors, staff members, and I believe that they also need a big round of applause. <laughs> Convocation is a natural time to think about your achievements and your journey. And what a journey you had. You know, whenever we embark on a journey, we do expect there'll be some bumps and some uh, maybe a flat tire, I don't know, some hurdles. But you had to face the biggest health crisis the world had ever seen, and you here today. This is also a moment at your convocation to think about the lessons you've learned in your journey, and particularly through this crisis. I would say that the pandemic has reminded us, as never before, of the importance and the fundamental importance, in fact, of our humanity. We witnessed how interconnected we are globally, and we face the storm together. We have a renewed confidence in our ability to face obstacles, but with this confidence, we also have learned the importance of belonging to a caring and sharing community. The pandemic reminded us how vital it is for us human beings to reach out to each other, to spend time together in person, to share emotions and experience, whether being on campus, with friends and classmates, away from screen, cheering for a team, a favorite team, listening to a beautiful concert, shopping at the farmer's market here on campus. It's important to us to be together in those moments. The pandemic is also, I believe, an opportunity to think about the notion of humility. Despite the extent of our knowledge and the advancement of our technologies, we found ourselves at the beginning of the crisis unable to find a quick solution to the virus. It's reminded us of our vulnerability, but also of the incredible importance of continuing our quest for knowledge. No doubt we'll continue to face challenges, climate change, conflicts around the world, rising inequalities around the world. But you have the talent, the knowledge, the skills, the passion to shape a better future. And so I hope that you will all commit to do so. You know, like you, I'm starting a new chapter in my life. It's a bit unsettling, I must say. Uh, it's a new chapter, and I haven't written it all out now. I don't have a full plan. And I'm often asked the question, so what are you going to do next? I don't have the full answer, I must say. But I do have part of the answer. That I know I'm going to do. And it is, what am I going to do next? I'm going to keep on learning. Because for me, Learning is one of the most exciting and rewarding human activities. And learning is what brings us all together. So this is part of my plan, and I hope that, given that I can enjoy the great learning we have here at McGill, both on this campus here and in downtown, I'll be able to come visit you quite often and sit in some of your classes here, conferences, go in the fields with students. This is what really excites me about my future. You know, you're the class of 2022, a very special class in the history of McGill. You're our bicentennial class. And so uh, you all this very special class among the very large network of alumni that you're joining today. Please come back, stay connected with McGill. Restez, restez connectés à votre alma mater. On a besoin de vous pour façonner notre troisième siècle. Alors, félicitations et merci beaucoup.
Thank you, Professor Fauci. We will now proceed with uh, the teaching award presentation. I invite uh, Professor Valerie Orsat, Associate Dean, Student Affairs, to present the award winner. And I invite the winner to please stand when their name is called and join the principal at center stage. Professor Orsat. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Madam Vice-Chancellor, I present to you Dr. Fernando Altamura. <laughs> Fernando's diverse background is a true mosaic of scientific and artistic facets. His love for the arts motivated him to study classical music culminating in a master and doctorate from Yale University and Université de Montréal, respectively. He pursued his scientific studies at McGill University, first in the Faculty of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences, and later in the Faculty of Medicine. Fernando joined our faculty in 2020, where he serves as faculty lecturer in STEM disciplines. He specializes in the pedagogy of mathematics, teaching all the calculus courses offered on campus. He is also an integral part of the freshman program team, providing our incoming students with the basic building blocks that ensure smooth tra transition to all aspects of uni university life. Fernando received several heartfelt nominations from students outlining his dedication to teaching. For example, Dr. Altamura has always been accessible when I've needed support in the class. He is consistently prepared and has his students' best interests in mind. He genuinely cares about the students. Another one, he never compromises the learning outcomes and perpetually looks for ways to improve so that we can meet the goals of each class. He also makes sure to learn the names of all of his students and works to build a rapport with them, which further encourages them to exceed his already very high standards. Madame Vice-Chancellor, I present to you Dr. Fernando Altamura, winner of the McDonald Campus Award for Teaching Excellence. Thank you, Professor Orsat, and congratulations to Professor Altamura on this uh, well-deserved rec recognition. We will now proceed with the honorary degree presentation. McGill is hon honored today to celebrate the achievements of Dr. William Dietz. I ask Professor Anya Geitman, Dean of the Faculty of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences, to present our distinguished uh, guest so that he may have conferred upon him the highest recognition that is within the power of this university to grant. And I ask Dr. Dietz to join me at center stage for the presentation of the honorary degree. Dean Geitman. Mr. Chancellor Delegate, today's honorary doctorate recipient, Dr. William Dietz, was an aspiring pediatrician when a summer job changed his life, one of the many serendipities he told us about last night. The year was 1969, and the University of Pennsylvania medical student was running the dispensary at an Episcopalian mission in rural Guatemala. He met many people who were clearly suffering from a lack of nutritious food, and began to wonder about the connection between immune function and undernutrition. At the end of the summer, he wrote a paper concluding that the medical and sociological factors behind undernutrition and associated diseases cannot be considered in isolation. C'est ainsi qu'a débuté l'exploration que le Dr. Dietz 
a mené tout au long de sa carrière sur la nutrition, la dénutrition, la forme physique et l'obésité. Après avoir obtenu un doctorat en biochimie de la nutrition au Massachusetts Institute of Technology, il a consacré plus d'une décennie à la réalisation de recherches sur le métabolisme en association à son travail clinique, notamment la direction d'une des premières cliniques d'obésité infantile aux États-Unis. He's been credited as being the first person to ring the alarm bell on childhood obesity in the early 1980s, authoring the first study to demonstrate a relationship between television viewing, habits, and obesity. How very relevant today with all our screen time. When I started, he says, when I started, there were only three people working on childhood obesity in the USA, he has recalled. I've always been interested in questions that nobody could answer because those questions identify a frontier of knowledge. Almost any question I asked back then didn't have an answer. That insatiable curiosity and drive to find answers brought him to the International Obesity Task Force where he became aware of the need for data to help shape policy. In 1999, just two years after being appointed director of the Division of Nutrition, Physical Activity and Obesity at the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, an abbreviation we all know now, Dr. Dietz helped conceive a landmark series of annual state maps tracking how rapidly obesity was spreading. In his 16 years at the CDC, he focused on solutions for reducing obesity, including developing the 1998 Clinical Guidelines on Overweight and Obesity that was reclassified many, uh, that reclassified many normal weight Americans as overweight creating the first U.S. body mass index growth charts for children and adopting healthy food purchasing policies across the federal government. In, his, in, his, in addition to his role at the CDC, Dr. Dietz has been professor of pediatrics at the Tufts University School of Medicine and director of clinical nutrition at the floating hospital of the New England Medical Center Hospitals. He's currently chair of the Sumner M. Redstone Global Center for Prevention and Wellness at the Milken Institute School of Public Health at George Washington University. A scientist who is passionate about affecting real change, William Dietz is a visionary leader who has tirelessly tackled one of the world's most pressing public health challenges. Mr. Chancellor Delegate, I present to you William Dietz, so that you may confer upon him the degree of Doctor of Science, honoris causa. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to invite Dr. Dietz to deliver the convocation address. Good morning. Chancellor McCall McMain, Principal and Vice Chancellor Fortier, Chair of the Board of Governors, Mr. Panda, members of the platform party, proud parents and guests, and most of all, 2022 graduates of the Faculty of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences. I want to begin by recognizing your parents and families for their love, sacrifices, inspiration, and support. <clears throat> you can take great pride in your children's accomplishments and in the career choices that they have made. The darkness that has surrounded us for the last several years is brighter as a consequence of what your children have already achieved and the promise of what they will accomplish. Thank you. On this very special occasion for me, I want to acknowledge my wife, Nancy, who is here with our children, Sarah and Jonathan, and our oldest grandchild, Jack. Nancy has been an extraordinary spouse, an exceptional mother and grandmother to our children and grandchildren. I could not have accomplished what I have without her love and support. I'm extraordinarily honored and humbled 
by my selection to receive an honorary degree <clears throat> from McGill University, not only because of McGill's outstanding stature, but also for the recognition of the work that I and my colleagues have done. It's particularly fitting that I receive this Doctor of Science honoris causa from the Faculty of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences. The citation that you just heard emphasized my early interest in obesity and undernutrition. These remain the two greatest threats to global health. Although the prevalence of undernutrition has gradually declined at least prior to COVID-19, the rise in the prevalence of obesity has continued unabated. Despite persistent efforts over the last 20 years, policy initiatives to increase physical activity and reduce obesogenic foods across local, provincial, and federal sectors have met with spotty success. In response to these challenges, The Lancet, one of the world's leading medical journals, formed a Lancet Commission on Obesity and charged the commission to stimulate action and strengthen accountability for the implementation of strategies to reduce obesity and its related inequities at national and global levels. I was honored to co-chair the commission with Boyd Swinburne, a friend and colleague from New Zealand. The commission consisted of 37 members and fellows from 14 countries, including Dr. Kuhnlein from the McGill School of Nutrition. 22 disciplines were represented, including malnutrition in all its forms, food systems, including indigenous food systems, political activity, political science, and policy making, climate change, urban planning, epidemiology, and the experience of people living with obesity. Early in our deliberations, we realized that obesity and undernutrition were linked to climate change. As we concluded in our 2019 Lancet report, these three pandemics constitute a syndemic of obesity, undernutrition, and climate change. They interact in time and place, they have adverse and synergistic effects on each other, and disproportionately and inequitably affect poor and marginalized populations, particularly in the global south. Recognizing that these three interconnected pandemics constitute a syndemic points to triple duty solutions, solutions that simultaneously mitigate and prevent obesity, undernutrition, and climate change. Greenhouse gases cause global warming. The sources of these greenhouse gas emissions in the US and Canada are similar. 10% come from agri the agricultural sector and 25 to 30% come from the use of fossil fuels for transportation. Global warming has already reduced crop yields and the micronutrient content of staple foods. Reduced, co reduced crop yields and micronutrient content contribute to undernutrition and food insecurity among vulnerable populations in low and middle income countries. Reliance on fossil fuels for transportation increases greenhouse gases and displaces physically active transport, thereby contributing to obesity. Cattle production for dairy and beef generates methane, a greenhouse gas 80 times more powerful than CO2, and beef consumption contributes to obesity and other chronic diseases. Corn production for fodder and ethanol feeds cattle production, fuels car use, and is converted to ultra-processed foods high in calories, fat, sugar, and salt. Ultra-processed foods contribute to obesity. Current practices are unsustainable. The solutions seem obvious, reduce demand for beef, move to more plant-based diets, improve public and physical transport systems, and voila, we reduce obesity under nutrition and climate change. Nonetheless, efforts to address each of these pandemics have been met with policy inertia. People with obesity are blamed for their disease. Industries disavow their contribution to obesity and climate change. The effects of cattle production on human health and the planet are disputed and the links between our contribution to climate change and undernutrition in the developing world is ignored. It's their problem, not ours. And yet it is our problem. Obesity, undernutrition, and climate change are global issues, and the same inequitable systems that cause food insecurity and undernutrition in low and middle income countries cause obesity in developed countries. And the catastrophic weather events that result from global warming threaten us all. Global food systems are controlled by multinational corporations that have increased the supply, demand, and the global consumption of heavily marketed ultra-processed foods, and subsidies for commodity crops and fossil fuels maintain our current agricultural and transport systems. Moving to more sustainable plant-based diets and transport systems will require concerted efforts and policy shifts to change demand. For example, one recent survey 
found that plant-based diets were ranked as the least popular climate smart policy compared to more policy, popular policy options such as adopting climate-friendly farming practices and reducing food waste. Federal policy is silent. Neither Canadian nor U.S. dietary guidelines recommend limiting red, red meat or processed meat products. The crisis of climate change and its effects on human and planetary health are existential uh, threats that we must address. The challenge is no longer what we need to do. The challenge is how to develop the political will to do what we need to do. The sustainability and decarbonization practices employed on this campus provide a model for what must be spread and scaled. We must continue to focus on the science that supports the need to reduce greenhouse gases and rebut the doubts sown by those who support the status quo. It's time to unquo the status. We must not be intimidated by the power of the forces in opposition to the changes that we need to make. And we must not allow a sense of hopelessness to lead to, an, to inaction. The stakes are too high. Sir William Osler, professor at McGill's Institute of Medicine 150 years ago, provided sage advice to his students about their daily work, saying, think not of the amount to be accomplished, the difficulties to be overcome, or the end to be attained, but set earnestly at the little task at your elbow, for surely our plain duty is to do what lies clearly at hand. What lies clearly at hand for all of us are the multiple little things that we can do to mitigate obesity, undernutrition, and climate change in our own lives and the lives of our families, and the big things that we must do to change the policies and practices of our institutions, municipalities, provinces, and federal government. Remember that the Chinese character for crisis is a combination of, of the characters for danger and opportunity. Seize the opportunity. The Faculty of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences has given you the necessary foundation. It is now time to translate that science into policy. The world needs your passion, your energy, your insights, your discoveries, and your commitment. Finally, and most importantly, as you take your next steps, please care for yourselves and for each other. And most of all, be kind. Thank you, Dr. Dietz. You have clearly pointed out that obesity has become a global scourge. I still remember growing up in India when we would read about the world where most people just ate to live. I guess now, after 60, 70 years, the world has come to the point where a good percentage of the population would love to live to eat. And, uh, but obviously, it has consequences of a serious nature for both the climate change and, and health care. Okay, we will now proceed with the conferral of uh, academic degrees. Professor Christopher Buttle, Associate Provost, Teaching and Academic Programs, will begin the formal proceedings. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor Delegate. I am pleased to invite students graduating from the Faculty of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences for the conferral of degrees. Convocation is a truly joyous event in the cycle of university's life, particularly at McGill, where we have such talented and accomplished students. You all know this. It's especially joyous today as we are able to gather in person. Each student crossing the stage will be greeted by the Chancellor Delegate, the Principal, or the Chair of the Board of Governors. Students receiving their first degree shall remove their mortarboard or hat, and at center stage they will see, be symbolically capped, signaling ceremonially the conferral of degree. Students who have already earned a university degree keep their mortarboard on and will be congratulated by a tap on the shoulder. Caps or taps, it will be okay. <laughs> the parchment or degree itself is given to students after they have a photo taken and leave the stage. You will see some students wearing red or white scarves. All self-identifying Indigenous students, First Nations, Inuit, and Métis are entitled to wear graduation scarves at convocation, in the community, and at any and all future McGill events that they attend. 
This year, we're extremely proud to welcome 110 new Indigenous graduates to the community at McGill University. En vertu de pouvoir qui me sont conférés par le Sénat de McGill, je déclare que le candidat dont le nom figure sur la liste officielle de diplômes à l'université, qu'il soit présent ou absent, en satisfait ou aux exigences de leur grade, diplôme ou certificate respective. By virtue of the powers conferred upon me by McGill Senate, I declare that the candidates whose names appear on the university's official list of graduates, whether they be present or absent, have satisfied the requirements for their respective degrees, diplomas, or certificates. By tradition at McGill, we'll begin with students receiving graduate degrees, followed by students obtaining undergraduate degrees. I now invite Professor Jean-Benoit Charon, followed by Professor Valerie Orsat, to present the graduates. Congratulations, class of 2022, felicitations. For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Bioresource Engineering, Paria Darvish Zadeh Boroujeni. Johannes Albe. <laughs> Jacob Liberty. <laughs> Ali Nawaf. <laughs> Okina Obi Njoku. Salam Parinban. For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Food Science and Agricultural Chemistry, Reele Gassim Zadeh. Wood Hamon Fui. Tamao Tsutsumi. For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Human Nutrition, Nathalie Garibé. <laughs> Christina Larder. <laughs> Mariam Razagé. Anne-Julie Tessier. For the degree of Master of Science in Bioresource Engineering, Ebenezer Botin. Isaac Botchwe. Ryan Clark. Stephanie Greeno. And Shika Jane. Tariebi Odele. And Peel. Amol Ranhawa. <laughs> Suashini Srinivasan. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Science in Food Science and Agricultural Chemistry, Baron Preet Kaur. <laughs> Amar Preet Brar. Adam Joseph Klassen.
Caroline Dubreuil. Rachandeep Kaur Sidhu. Shital Tangri. For the degree of Master of Science in Human Nutrition, Sarah Sorini. Yaojiao Yang. For the degree of Master of Science Applied in Bioresource Engineering, Mersha Bayat. <laughs> Russell Bamey. Ekam Raj Singh Kate. Noshin Moazadeh. Shukmandi Singh. For the degree of Master of Science in Applied Nutri in Human in for the degree of Master of Science Applied in Human Nutrition, Prerana Adikabi. Anna Beg. Valérie Bouzeau. Justin Shriki. Courtney Fitzpatrick. Felicia Artono. Irem Karamanoglu. Ula Wabonmi Jamodu. Imogen Lee. Megan Mamshor. Kathleen Morgan. Noor Marcharbash. Leigh O'Brien. Armagan Shabengi. Yening Wang. Clara Yang. Iba Youssef. <laughs> Elena Ja. For the degree of Bachelor of Engineering by Resource, Lian, no, sorry, Lian Agostini. Allez. Manami Bastelica. <applaudissements> Nathalie Bejani. <applaudissements> Ilana Bensigno. <applaudissements> Antoine Bouvier. And Manda Bucci, distinction. Andrea Calabres, distinction. Felipe Caldera Sequera. Laurie Corbeil Phillips. Julien Duey. Thomas Shistu. <laughs> Kayla Dowd. <laughs> Karina Dumais.
Ravi Duivedi Lang. William Goodman. Ilias Adair. Michael Ita. Shubankar Joshi, first class honors in bioresource engineering. Azad Kalen Kiaran. Julia Lespin. Heidi Machek. Amélie Marc. Mina Matsumoto. Chu Yao Meng. Emmanuel Morin, distinction. Dorcas Nyaran Senji Yandemye. Sing Chi Chi. Beatrice Reed, Dean's Honor List. Ines Sergini. <laughs> Jeffrey Smith. <laughs> Roxanne Tremblay, distinction. <laughs> Chloe Wells. <laughs> Miranda Chow. Jing Yu. For the degree of Bachelor of Science in Food Science, Wang Song Gu. A Yun Jin. Su Yun Ki. Jia Yu Li. <laughs> Alexandra Rajinsky. <laughs> Wen Wan Zhu. <laughs> Josie Zhu. For the concurrent degree of Bachelor of Science in Food Science and Food and Nutritional Sciences, Audrey Bocarbatay Distinction, <laughs> Valeria Boyarkina, First Class Honors in Food Science and Nutritional, Nutritional Sciences, Dean's Honor List. Ye Ying Chen, Camille Dumont, Henry Ha, Tala Ibri, Yiki Jiang. Megan Raimondo. <laughs> Lamia Zeda. <laughs> Han Wen Zhang. Mile Shao, Honors in Food and Nutritional Sciences.
for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Nutritional Sciences in Dietetics, Enas Al Ashi. Vanessa Anoya. Woo! Naomi Averill, distinction. <laughs> Linda O, distinction. <laughs> Olivia Caron, distinction. Rosemary Chanchi, distinction. <laughs> Elise Di Frucia. <laughs> Catherine Dulong, Dean's Honor List. <laughs> Laura Duque Montoya. Caroline El Age, Zishan uh, Jiang, Daniel Cassis Akal, Dean's Honor List, Anne Marie Lacroix. Ji Ping Li. Christina Majuga, distinction. <laughs> Vanessa Martinez. <laughs> Gis Ghislaine Mouni Abdou. <laughs> Shannon Udi, Dean's Honor List. Adina Elena Vladulescu, distinction. <laughs> Amélie Canville. <laughs> Caroline Williams, distinction. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Science in Nutritional Sciences, Nutrition. Nadia Azuni, Dean's Honor List. Sabia Begum. Arina Karaterzi. Gloria Chen. Kay Deng. Salma El Safadi. Sarah El Kadi. Chloe Garzon, Dean's Honor List. Uh, Lynn Jeng. Jeng. Rookie Lee. Shea. Michelle Shea. Sahar Jalil. Zoe Jiang. Grace Kaufman. Amanda Kolarik, distinction. <laughs> Olivia Kufas, Dean's Honor List. <laughs> Wang Kian Li. <laughs> Zhang Jian Li. <laughs> Nancy May. 
Liana Martins Medina, distinction. Amanda Moore. Yasamin Nasimi. Mariam Nusrula. Ian Peng. Olivia Pouret. Uh, Uladzislav Rudaku, Dean's Honors List. <laughs> Ting Ji Tan. <laughs> Ali Lu. <laughs> Wen Rui Wan. Fan Shi, Youssef Youssef, Dean's Honor List, for the Certificate in Food Science, Theresa Steele. Thank you, Professors Sharon and Orsat, for reading all the graduates' names. Now I invite uh, Chloe Garzon to say a few words on behalf of the graduating class as this year's valedictorian. Chloe. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor members of the platform party, fellow graduates, and guests. Before I dive into my speech, I wanted to first congratulate all the students that are here today. Graduation is no small feat. We have studied, laughed, made new friends, made mistakes, stumbled, and even shed tears over the past three, four, or five years of our lives as there is no specific or required time in obtaining a degree. All with the goal to get here, one step further on our own journeys to becoming the adults and professionals which undoubtedly the world will take note of. Based on what I've witnessed at Mac, such as our bioresource engineering students excelling in competitive case competitions, the delicious dishes created in the food labs just on the other side of this wall, and the overall max spirit of inclusion, perseverance, and creativity, I know that our graduating class can and will change the world for the better. But I digress. Let me take a couple steps back. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Chloe Garzon, and I'm graduating U3 nutrition student, and I've had the absolute pleasure of spending my last year heavily integrated in the academic and extracurricular side of the McDonald campus. In my role as president for the McDonald Campus Student Society, I've worked with our two devoted staff, Joelle and Juliana, who work tirelessly throughout the week, and as I'm sure you all know, since our student life is not contained to the hours of nine to five, Joelle and Juliana often put in extra hours on evenings and weekends to ensure that student life continues to function optimally and that us, the MCSS students, are well taken care of always. I have also had the privilege of working alongside my amazing executive team, a group of students that I want to thank from the bottom of my heart, who have taught me that you are nothing without a good team, as they make all the trials, tribulations, and success all the much more bearable and worthwhile. This past year has not been an easy year, but it has been rewarding, and I would not have traded it for anything else. With the fall 2022 return to in-person classes, the ever-changing provincial restrictions, 
the Omicron wave, the flip to online classes, the switch back to in-person classes, and now some hybrid classes, getting COVID, having a roommate or friend get COVID, wading your way through McGill accommodations, we have definitely been kept on our toes. But despite the constantly shifting outside world, or perhaps because of it, the students of Mac have banded together that much more fiercely. Clubs and events have come back in full force, with new clubs being birthed by fresh and eager young minds. Membership and involvement increased across the board, with people finding creative ways to work within the restrictions imposed upon them. We saw the Cayley Bar open its doors again, thanks to our amazing student bar manager, William Goodman, who is here today. And many other amazing students. Will's drive and passion allowed for us all to witness that one last FMT country jig before our departure. A new student-run restaurant was opened in the CC, adding another place for students, faculty, and staff to grab a tasty and affordable bite. I could continue to list all the amazing ways students have worked to improve and ensure continuity at MAC and its activities, but as I've limited time, take me at my word when I assure you that each and every one of these students that sits before you here today represents the resilient Mac spirit, and each and every one of them has contributed to its legacy. I stand before you in awe of my fellow students and all that has been accomplished in this very short time that is our last in-person year as Mac undergrad students. Making this speech and thinking about how my years at Mac impacted me, I didn't realize I would be so sad to say goodbye. I will miss the quintessential colors of fall at Mac, the lake, the paddle shack, spontaneous runs to the arboretum, visiting the greenhouse, the koi fish, the apples, the Mac market. Fariel has truly spoiled us all, and I think we're all ruined for future farmer's baskets. I will miss the professors I've had classes with and those that I've worked together with and now regard as mentors. I may even miss the shuttle. But most of all, I'll miss the students who remain the beating heart of this campus. All that to say, there is a lot to miss, but even though inevitably nothing in life is permanent and permanent, we must remember that it is what you do with those incredible memories and the connections you work to maintain that make the difference. So, as we move forward into the next and very exciting stages of our respective lives, know that we will each have an invisible but tangible thread that ties us back to here, and the warm and persevering spirit that makes us proud to call ourselves Mac grads. Thank you. Thank you, Chloe, for those wonderful reflections and comments. And uh, you're definitely going to miss your campus. And real life begins tomorrow. Uh, will the graduating class please stand? Je demande tous les diplômés de se lever, including you, of course. <laughs> In my capacity as a Chancellor Delegate of McGill University, I declare and confirm that each of you is now entitled to the distinction of the degree, diploma, or certificate that has been conferred upon you with all the honors, rights, privileges, and responsibilities that are pertinent thereto. A titre de Chancelier Delegué de l'Université McGill, je déclare et confirme que chacun de vous a maintenant le droit à la distinction de grade, diplôme, ou certificat qui vous a été conféré avec tous les honneurs, droits, privilèges et responsabilités qui y sont rattachés. Félicitations, congratulations. Thank you. All the best. The Secretary General, Ms. Edita Ragovaska, will now make a few closing remarks. Thank you. Dear graduates, in closing, I'd like to leave you with a few words from the late Stanley Frost, a McGill professor of history, who in his work on the history of McGill says the following. Traditions are hard to come by, but once established, 
they are remarkably enduring. The university has been fortunate that, that the tradition was early established that McGill is not merely an institution, but a community. A community in which bonds of, of affection are strongly woven so that a sense of belonging to McGill need not end with graduation, but can be a lifelong commitment. Donc j'espère que les liens d'amitié que vous avez tissés à McGill seront avec vous longtemps et feront partie de tout ce que vous allez faire, tant au niveau personnel que professionnel, que ce soit ici au Canada ou ailleurs dans le monde. En vous souhaitant le meilleur des succès, je vous dis encore une fois bonne chance et félicitations. To conclude this ceremony, please stand and join Dr. Smith Bassett in the singing of our national anthem. Pour conclure la cérémonie, veuillez-vous lever afin d'entonner en compagnie de Madame Smith Bassett l'hymne national du Canada. <laughs> 